Wow, over $300,000 below asking price. Holy crap, that, that's not a misprint. No, I checked it, I checked it two, three times. But I know what you all are saying. You are saying, yeah, but $300,000, but the house was probably a three or four million dollar house, two million. No, it wasn't. It was below a million dollars. This is a huge percentage of a drop. I'm going to show you the details tonight. I'm going to show you a whole lot more because what I get into tonight, these are the questions I'll be answering tonight. What is the current active listings? How many, how many sold in the last seven days? How many homes are under contract right now? How many new homes sold in the last seven days? What is the current active new home listings? How many active listings are foreclosures right now? How did people pay for these homes? What percentage of homes sold? Sold for under list, at list, and above list, and much, much more. Hey, you know what? This is week 48 of the show Bubble Watch, and we're in season two, where I cover all that stuff, okay? I'm just a regular guy who happens to be a real estate agent up here in North Florida, so, you know, I cover this Jacksonville metro area. So right now, let's start off in the back end of my MLS and look at those active listings. All right, here we are in the back end of the Northeast Florida MLS, and we're gonna look at those active listings first. Currently, there's 8,105, and that is your inventory right now. Okay, next thing we're gonna look at is how many sold in the last seven days, okay? That number is 446. Next, I'm gonna take a look and see how many are active under contract, okay? And these are ones that are under contract with contingencies. That number is 1,496. Next, we'll take a look and see how many went pending in the last seven days. These are ones that are under contract, um, but changed to pending status. That means their contingencies are gone. And that number is 405. Next, and when you add up the pending and then the to active under contract, that gives you the total under contract. Okay, next we're gonna take a look and see how many people withdrew their listings in the last seven days. Okay, that number is 67, okay? Withdrawns are still active listings, it's just that they can't be sold. I mean, they can't be shown. Um, what happens is sometimes somebody's sick in the family or whatever at home, so they don't want people coming in the house and looking at it. Sometimes it's maintenance where they need repairs. All right, next we're gonna take a look and see how many expired in the last seven days. That number is 113. Now these are different from withdrawn in that these are not active listings no longer. They are listings that did not sell and they are off the market. Okay, next we're gonna take a look and see how many new homes sold in the last seven days. That number is 56. Okay, next we're going to take a look and see how many new homes out of the active listings, how many are new construction. That number is 1,975. All right, the next thing I do is I look and see how many are in foreclosure status. Now this will be include also foreclosures, pre-foreclosures, and short sales. All right, so let's start off and see how many, now these are active listings, how many active listings are in the foreclosure status? That number is 305. Okay, <clears throat> next we're going to take a look and see how many are in the pre-foreclosure status. That number is 23. And next we look at short sales. How many are in short sale status? That number is 28. All right, now we're going to take a look at the condos. Okay, out of the active listings, how many are condominiums? That number is 991. Okay, next we're gonna take a look and see how many sold properties um, were condos. How many condos sold um, in the last seven days? That number is 44. Okay, now what I do is I take all that data and I export it into an Excel spreadsheet. Well, that Excel spreadsheet that comes from that has a lot more information than what I just covered there. So I'm gonna put it into my own Excel spreadsheets that look more like this, so that's easier to read and we can follow. Because I do this every week so you can follow these numbers. We're looking for that pattern to see what happens. But while all those numbers are crunching, let's check out those scary interest rates, what they did this week. Okay, here we're gonna look at the rates here. These are the 30-year fixed. Uh, last week we were ended at 6.99, and holy crap, all right. We're up to 7.37. Oh my gosh. 
Oh my, I mean, big jumps, big jumps. All right, let's take a look at those FAA since they're generally less. Did I say FFA or something? I meant FHA. If I didn't say FHA, I meant FHA, all right? FHA, we were at 6.44, and look, we ended at 6.75. They took some big jumps, too. Not as big of leaps as the others. All right, let's look at those VA rates because they're generally less also. VA, 6.45 last, last week, and we're at 6.75 for them. All right, let's take a look at this. Basically, the worst day for mortgage rates since October of 2022. And boy, it felt like it, didn't it? All right, this is the part that I found interesting. All right, after hair splitting aside, there's just aren't many past examples of rates rising more than a quarter point in a day. Before COVID, it had happened one other time in the past decade. Let me show you. This is what they're talking about right here. As you can see where it went up uh, over a quarter of a percent, point two eight right there. Um, that's when it, that was the biggest jump. And like they say, they haven't seen it in over a decade since, uh, since uh, before COVID. All right, next I go and I look at a series of graphs and charts that it's, now, it's basically Duval County, so it's the Jacksonville area. Now, I've been doing it every week, so it stays consistent, we can see. And what it, it covers a variety of things. One, it looks at that price per square foot. We saw it jumped up for the first time in like three months, okay? And then it also, I look at the inventory. It also looks at the median price and the days on the market to give us a pattern of what's going on. And that, since Jacksonville's the biggest, okay, uh, city up here in this area, then that's what we use that as, as like a barometer, you know, to see what's going on. Although sometimes some of the other numbers are a little bit different within what Jacksonville itself is. All right, so let's take a look at those charts. All right, here we are with the price per square foot. And again, this here is like uh, your Jacksonville area. Okay, um, and it's, uh, it's up there uh, still. Okay, it didn't go down. It went up last week after all those weeks down and, uh, you know, it has stayed the same there. All right, let's take a look and see what it looks like a year out. There you can see right there, the, I mean, how fast it went up. Okay, but <laughs> started to go down, stopped, and now it's going back up. All right, let's take a look at three year out. And you see how it climbed and climbed up there and uh, started sloping down there, okay, but then um, we leveled off. And uh, I don't know, it doesn't look like it's, it's heading down. All right, let's take a look and, and see what we've got for the inventory, okay? Right here we see, okay, the inventory was dropping down a little. Now this is Jacksonville, even though we saw the whole Jacksonville Metro, nine counties going up, um, we saw Jacksonville's Duval County going down. Now it flattened out, okay? So this is the first change we've seen in a while. We saw it, it was sloping down, okay? It didn't go down as fast as it went up, but we, it has stalled for this week. Let's take a look at that one year. That's what it looks like at the one year level. And then we'll take a look at the chart at the three year. All right, and there we are with the three year out. Next, we're going to take a look at that median price. And if those prices per square foot have been going up, then the median price should also. Okay, and as we see, that median price continues to climb, okay? Um, had that dip, okay, there, um, you know, in October of last year when it started. Um, rode us right on through to the beginning of the year. And then in around February, we started making that turn up, and it hasn't looked back. All right, let's look at the one year. There's our one year chart and you saw how rapidly it rose and then it started going down everyone said here we go it's going to be the same but it sure didn't all of a sudden it had different ideas stopped and started heading up let's look at the three year and there you see what the three year looks like next we're going to take a look at look at those days on the market all right here we are um and the days of the market continues to drop and that's telling us that we've got more uh, there are a couple of things that be telling us. One, that we've got um, more that are, you know, multiple offer situations, and those, those are really, they're generally with less than a week on the market. 
and then others in general could be people maybe just priced them better or taking big cuts like I alluded to where that house was sold for over three hundred thousand dollars before below asking price and I'm going to show it to you we're going to go over the details here later on in the show here but you know it could be a combination of all that all right let's look at the one year out on this there's one year on the days on the market and then we'll look at the chart for the three years and there's three years out okay now I'm going to go ahead and go into my Excel spreadsheets where we look at a whole lot of different data so let's check out those spreadsheets right now all right here we are into the charts uh, the Excel spreadsheets and for those of you that are new to the show, the yellow columns are the current weeks as I do them. Right here we see we are in week 48, so this is the one we're doing right now, but you can see week 47 and week 46 where the other yellow is there. Now, what I do is I put next to it in the white column, I show week 48 a year ago, okay? And then in that column were the numbers, and then over here on YOY, that is the year over year, the uh, percentage of difference from a year ago, and these are the actual numbers that I pulled out into this Excel spreadsheet. is isn't from a graph or chart that I got from anybody else. I just pulled it out myself from this show for the, ever, for the last year. So, let's start off here. Week 48, we've got active listings, 8,105, and that has increased a little bit. Sold, 446. What a drop. Okay, this was a big drop, okay? Um, and it was even less than at this time last year, too. You know, we're down. Okay, active under contract, um, 1,496. Okay, that did go up. All right. Pending, 405. Now, the pending went down, but the total active under contract, so they haven't gone to pending status, so they were newly under contract, probably, gives us a total of 1,901 under contract, so that is up from last week. Okay, withdraws, 67, um, down from last week. Uh, 113 expired. Now, that's, you know, like about half of what it was last week. Well, that was a real jump last week there. But we were still up pretty high here. We're over 100, okay? New homes sold. This is, this, this should have been my headline, I guess, you know, today. New homes sold 56. I was shocked when I saw this. I mean, they were, they were cranking. We were there. Um, new homes active inventory jumped to 1,975, and that's going to happen when that sold drops that dramatic. And you can see the percentage of homes that sold that are new, that's here in the orange, it was only a little over 12%, okay, where we're at a third before. This, this is huge. This is a big drop this week. Our, and that's even with them giving the uh, incentives and stuff like that right now. And, and some, a lot of them, some, a lot of them have had reduced prices too. They have lowered their prices and they've got deals with the rate buy downs. All right, let's look and see what those condos did here real quickly. Oops. All right. Uh, active condos 991 so that is up we're seeing an increase in the inventory there sold condos up okay so this here is interesting because we see the overall sold of everything is down and was way down and the condos actually went up and so the percentage of actives that are condos has remained pretty much constant in the 12 percent range right here all right how do these people pay for these houses all right, here we look at cash is coming back, 32%, one-third, holy crap. Okay, I mean, that's, that's up. Um, we haven't seen that since week 39, okay? Now, um, conventional, 38%, so that dropped from last week, but it's about what we were uh, the others, other weeks. FHA, 14s, dropped a little bit. VA, 13, and others climbed up to 3%. All right, let's look at the foreclosure numbers. Okay, these are active listings that are in foreclosure status, 305. Those that are in pre-foreclosure status, 23. Short sales, 28. Overall, we see 356, so it still is steadily increasing. And as inflation goes up, in fact, today, I just saw the gas prices changed again, 365 a gallon. All right, so, I mean, that's, that's hurting people. Everything, everything's related to the gas prices, I'm telling you, okay? Um, if gas is, gas is high, 
things are crap. When gas is low, then things are good. All right, five. Let's take a look now at the next chart, which is the homes that sold for five hundred thousand and above. Twenty-nine percent of the homes sold. Okay, so we're still up there, almost a third. Homes that sold under list, 68%, so down a little bit. Homes that sold at list, 16%, and the ones that sold above list, I was surprised to see this, jump up to 16%. And I think what we've got is, and this goes along with, you know, where the days on the market's dropping and you get the multiple offers, I'm thinking we may have some more people, you know, playing that game where they'll put the price a little bit under, um, you know what the market value is to draw people in and then get a little bit of a bidding war. It's not as prevalent as it was in 2021 the beginning of 2022 but we're starting to see more of it. All right let's look into the different ranges. All right here we go uh, when we look at the homes that sold for 500 above everything in the, that was 29 percent. The homes that sold in the 400s 14 percent of those Homes that sold in the 300s, 24%. Homes that sold in the 200 range, 18%. And homes that sold below 200, 15%. So here we see, again, the ones that are over half a million and the ones in the 300 seem to be the sweet spot, okay? Now, what I do is take a look at the new homes and we're going to look at those and see what they did in the category since there's not that many of them. So there was only 56 homes sold, but you can see here 21 were half a million and above, 13 were in the 400, 17 was in the 300, 5 was in the 200, and none were below 200. But there's our total of 55. So that shows you where the new homes went. All right, let's look at the, speaking of new homes, let's see what they did. New homes that sold under list, 56%. Homes that sold at list, 21%. And homes that sold above list, 23%. A big jump, okay, in the new homes that sold above. Now, you know, and then we saw a drop in the amount of home, new homes sold. So that's interesting. But the homes that sold under list, that dropped a lot too. All right, the next thing I do is what is called MLS Advantage, okay? And for those of you that are new to the show, I get new people every week, okay? So I need to explain this, is that I, I'm in the Northeast Florida MLS, which is the largest, and that's where this data comes from. But there's a lot of other MLS boards around up here in North Florida, okay? And so what I do is I take their data and I combine it to get a real true value of what sold in this last seven days. But then I take it a step further and I break it down by county. So we look at how many sold in each county. Because a lot of people were interested in like, say like St. John's County or in like, you know, Flagler County or, you know, or Clay County. So we break it down by the counties to see the pattern with the counties week by week. So let's go into MLS Advantage right now. All right, here we put in all those counties, and as we can see here, Baker County, five. They tied with last, last week. Union County, zero, um, dropped from last week. Uh, Bradford, you know, a big drop to only two. Clay County, 51. Nassau, 56. Duval County had 224. St. John's had 145. Flagler, 77. Wow, that's like half what what they were. Putnam County, um stayed the same at 22 for a total of 582 units sold. All right, now I do the question of the week, all right? Now this week's question of the week is gonna be a little bit different because I'm gonna ask you all a question, okay? And uh, something I'm thinking about doing and looking at. Now, first of all, I've got a lot of people that want me to do more of these like neighborhood tours and stuff like that. Um, there's so many people buying new homes, new construction. They want to see these neighborhoods. People have asked me if I would do some of these tours. So I'm going to start doing some of those tours, okay? But what I wanted to know from y'all is I was thinking about doing this show instead of on a weekly, doing it on a monthly. I would still track all those numbers. So all those weekly numbers that are in my Excel spreadsheet would stay there. They're downloadable, of course, you know, in the newsletter. So you can always get that weekly. But then I do a recap here monthly. Once a month I do the show. So let me know in the comments if you would like me to keep doing weekly or if you want me to do go to the monthly version 
If you're not on YouTube, have an account there, and you can't leave a comment, then shoot me an email, okay, at this email address. Tell me what you want to do. Also, when you shoot me that, you can, you can subscribe to the newsletter if you want, okay? If you tell me to put you on the newsletter, I will. If you don't, I won't, okay? So let me know what you want to do. All right, so now let's take a look at those houses of the week and <laughs> house of the week. Holy cow, this one here. Okay, this is the one that's 300,000 below. We're going to start off with that one first and then we'll go to another and we'll look at some background information. All right, okay, here we are. House of the week that sold below. All right, it was built in 1994, it's in Duval County, 1,788 square feet. It's a two-bedroom, two-bath, but it's on the river, okay? Um, it's, um, it, it's nice waterfront, okay? All right, so let's take a look at the history and see what was going on. All right, here we see they put it on the market for $850,000, okay? Um, over time, they gradually lowered it to $799, then they took a nice jump to $699, then $649, at which time they got an offer for $547,500 after being on the market for 143 days. All right, what did they pay for this house? Okay, they bought the house back in 2004 for $415,000. Well, something I wanted to show you is the um, price per square foot. Okay, this one here was $306 a square foot. That's what was the selling price, okay? But again, remember, that was on the river. All right, here we are in an appreciation calculator, and uh, as you can look, well, <laughs> it didn't do well. Um, almost 20 years, 1.4%, okay? Now, keep in mind, okay, when they bought that, that was right before the big peak there, so it could have been elevated when they bought it. Went through the downturn of 2008-2010, went through the downturn that we've had here, the correction. So they could have taken some hits on that. And I do believe this here, though, that they did replace the roof 10 years ago. And I think the AC had said like six or eight years ago. All right, here we are, the house that sold above. All right, built in 1982, 1,450 square feet, Duval County. Um, this one here is a three-bedroom, two-bath. Um, let's take a look and see um, what that history on that is. Okay, here it went on the market for $499,900. So basically half a million. Ended up selling for $535,000. Um, so days on the market was, um, was just five. Um, and... Uh, you know, uh, that's telling we had multiple offers. Let's take a look. All right, and sure enough, right here we see multiple offers received, okay? Well, let's see how much did this one sell for a uh, for square foot. And holy cow, $368 a square foot. <laughs> My goodness, all right? Well, let's see, what did these people pay for it? All right, I can see what's going on here. Now, well, hold on, let me go back to the narrative. All right, this one here also, it's a brand new um, air conditioning system, roof, and full septic installed this year, 2024. All right, so now that, that makes sense now with what I, what I saw. Let's look at what they paid. Okay, this is interesting here. Now, now follow me. Now, I don't know this for sure, but this is what I think happened. Okay, um... As we can see, October 2023, it was bought for $303,000, okay, from the person that was living there, but a company bought it, okay? So, sold on the same day there, three hundred and thirty. dollars so it was a profit there, $27,000, okay. This is what looked like is what they, you know, a wholesale deal um, where these people sold, sold it over to them, the purchase agreement. Um, the original person had it, but then they sold it before they closed. So these other people, because it was another company that bought it for 330 so they wanted to, I'm sure it was, it was intended for a flip. They figured in everything on what it was going to cost them, you know, to, to fix this house and all that. And let's go back to those numbers again, because we're not going to do an appreciation on this, because this one wouldn't make any sense at less than six months. But 
they so they ended up the last one bought it at 330 and you see then they sold it for 535 so that was 35 35,100 above the list price, but it was $205,000 above what they paid for it, okay? So they said they put in a new roof, new air conditioning, new septic system. All right, so say they put in $100,000 for those three items and then maybe some more stuff that they had. So then they still made over $100,000 in six months. All right, so what, even if they put 150 and made 50,000 in six months, okay? Still, this was a nice flip, okay? So this was a good flip, okay? Now we'll have to see, you know, these were investors that bought it, you know, and they probably paid cash for it. Um, and then, is this is one of those where they turned around and turned it into a rental, okay? Like some people, this, they made a nice house for someone to buy, and it's turnkey, and everyone wants turnkey now. People don't want to put work into it. These people put the work into it, then resold it, so they got paid for it, and then the people that bought the house are happy with what they got. Well, as you can see, there's a big differences in those houses of the week, all right? Now, now something that if you're interested in, you know, relocating up here to North Florida or moving out of North Florida, you know, here's the number to call. You can get a hold of me or my team here at this number. And also you can um, email us at this. And of course you can text if you'd like us to help you with relocating here in Northeast Florida and finding yourself a home. Okay, well, you know what? This is week 48. It's in the can right now, and so until week 49, I'm out of here.